enjoyable, I think, because uh, you get to work on the computers and uh, broaden your horizon with the technology. Is this your first time to use computers? Um, yeah, because in high school we didn't have much. I mean, Leo's a small place, so uh, money was s spread out quite a bit. Uh, but this is first time getting to use these. So you're, you're given design problems uh, in the conventional way uh, to solve the problems, to make things work, to put things together. How long would it take you to accomplish that task? Um, <laughs> some people think I tend to do it a bit quicker than others. Uh, it just, I don't know, just whatever looks good to me, I leave so it could take an hour, it could take five minutes. So just does the computer speed the process for you, though, or to give you more options? What does it, do? it gives you a lot more options. Uh, we also have something, we use Adobe Photoshop, where we can uh, take our, our images and distort them uh, like that. You can, you can change them all different ways, so uh, it broadens the horizon a lot. So what's the big advantage to working with uh, Speed, I think, because it's a lot easier to do this than a... Uh, to cut paper out and paste it. What are you majoring in? <clears throat> I'm a secondary education major, and I'm specializing in art, so I get to take this fun class. And you're looking for more design courses, or is it? Um, whatever <laughs> that fills my requirements for graduation is what we get done. But then I'll take some uh, uh, ex any other ex extra classes I can take. I'll I'll fill my my credit needs. My name is Summer Denton, S-U-M-M-E-R-D-E-N-T-O-N. Okay, I'm from Bloomington, Indiana. Okay. You're a freshman? No, nope, I'm a sophomore. sophomore. Mm -hmm. okay. Is art uh, your major? It's my minor. It's a minor. Yeah. I'm hoping to do something with like art therapy in the future. What's your major? Well, in French and psychology. I couldn't give up the French. <laughs> so I'm trying to do both. A, little, a real mix. There. Yeah, definitely. Lots of interests, and I can't decide, so. Well, tell me about what you're doing here. Well, we're basically working with um, positive and negative shapes and trying to see both um, the black and white and the no tan idea through different alphabet um, procedures and lines and various different kind of things on the computer. Well, uh, what is it teaching? Um, it's to look at things and a very different way, looking at both the positive and negative shapes as figures and how they work together and a lot actually a lot about computers that I didn't know before. It's the first I, when I signed up for this class I didn't um, there's other foundation classes that don't have um, computer design with them and I didn't know that that's what I was getting when I signed up for it but I was actually pretty glad that we're doing things on the computer that I haven't done before. Um, uh, compare the, the work with the computer and the assignments that you have versus trying to do it the conventional way, the same assignment? Well, it's a lot quicker and you have more um, to work with. Like, um, you can push the problem a lot farther when you have just the mouse to move things instead of having to cut things out and make them. And you get to a more variety of things when you have it at your fingertips <laughs> speed. What's the benefit here by working with the technology? Um, basically the same thing, the speed and the, um, you get to push things farther when you, when you work with um, such like geometric shapes and stuff too. You get to see how they combine in different aspects and see. So in other words, does the computer allow your mind to just free think and move as quickly as the computer can? Yeah, definitely. I think that it makes it a lot quicker to, it's really hard to explain how because you're allowed to like shrink and expand different objects, and it, it's a lot easier to see what it would look like, and then you could change it um, just by the click of a finger. Yeah, do you think you'll employ uh, computer design and anything? I hope so. Yeah, I'd like to take another class if I have a chance in my schedule. That'd be very beneficial, I think. Whenever you're ready. Give, give you my name and spell it. Okay, it's Barbara Giorgio. It's um, G-I-O-R-G-I-O. -O. And your title? I'm an assistant professor, and I also serve as a primary department advisor for the Department of Art. And I teach primarily the foundations classes and the drawing classes. How long have you been on faculty? Um, eight years. Where are you from? I'm originally from Munster, Indiana. 
and I did my undergraduate work actually at Ball State University and did my graduate work at Ohio State University. Then I came back home, yes. Yeah, so I kind of have seen how things have changed from when I was a student and took the foundations classes to how they're being taught now. So it's really exciting to be involved in the computers and technology and to see how design solutions could be pushed farther and students at a freshman level what our students are doing is just amazing because they are coming up with solutions that um, more advanced sophomore junior level students would be doing even similar to what students would be doing in a graphic design course um, because we're getting them on the computer and they're able to push the solutions farther come up with multiple solutions instead of um, just learning the hand skills they're able to come up with a good design an exciting design instead of just an okay design and then they can execute it with their hand skills and with the material skills where before it would take them a while to come up with a solution and we would have to move them along to go ahead and execute it before they would really come up with a fantastic solution. Now that's a real subjective decision isn't it? Yes well you know Traditionally, when we would teach design, we would tell a student, come up with five thumbnail sketches um, in their sketchbook or come up with ten solutions in their sketchbook. And the freshman level student typically would maybe come up with maybe just two solutions or they'd come up with one solution and decide, I like this solution, so this is the one I want to execute. Now that we're doing it on the computer, it's not unreasonable to ask them to come up with 20 solutions because they can do it real quickly on the computer. And then they have a set of solutions to select from and to pick and to make judgments on as far as which one is compositionally working, which one is doing something visually exciting. A lot of the students are talking about positive and negative shapes, how they're interacting, and so they can have a pool to select from. And then they're executing something, um, working with gouache or working with cut paper or working with collages um, to execute that solution out. Perfect. Okay. okay. Give me your name and spell it. Uh, Patricia Nelson. N-E-L-S-O-N. -E and uh, your time? A uh, professor of art. Okay. Uh, a professor of art. Yeah. How long have you been on that? 18 years. Hey, 18. Where did you, you come from? I came from uh, north of, northwest Washington State. I went to the University of Washington, and I did graduate work at the State University of New York. Okay. So you've seen at a, a tremendous amount of changes. A tremendous like amount of changes, yeah. Some of the courses taught our courses like it. Uh-huh. Um, and, and did you ever think? No, because I was a terrified of computers for about 10 years. But then I found um, which the thing which is very obvious here that you can you can have a lot of choices in design. And um, uh, my my area the area my main main area here is metalsmithing and jewelry design. And um, in order to make anything that's really good, you have to have a, a very good idea to begin with. And, and when you have a lot of uh, design skills so that you can, you can go through ideas very quickly, you can evaluate what you're doing, you can, make, you can figure out what your given conditions are and what your variable conditions are and really push a problem, you make much better designs and you make much better pieces. So I think I, I'm really sold on this method of teaching foundation design because it does um, instill the idea that, that you, you can come up and think you can come up with a lot of ideas. You can think of a lot of possibilities. And then from all those possibilities, you can choose what is most effective. And when you see lots and lots and lots of things, it becomes obvious. Things that you've really pushed and things that you've really thought about and solutions that really come after you've investigated a lot of the possibilities of the problem are, are probably the stronger solutions. Long term, OK, this is foundations of design. This mm -hmm. is like foundations one. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. So long term. Technology, computers, what's it going to do for the students? Again, I think it will, it'll make them more, make them better designers, it'll make them more adaptive to, to future changes. I think it will make them uh, more discriminating. I think it will make them um, mm, just better designers. Ball State has a tradition of um, finding ways to take technology, take it into the classroom the learning mechanism and, and give the students that opportunity and this is one of those revolutionary ways it seems to me. Yes it is and um, the, the university has been very supportive of us when we when we decided to investigate this idea with the with the programmer the, the person who pro programs this is actually from Seattle and uh, and the university was very very supportive when when 
he and I and Barbie got together and decided that we'd like to try this. And they thought it was a wonderful idea. And I don't know that many universities will do that, sort of right off the bat, would, that would be so enthusiastic about this sort of thing. But this university was. And I think that um, this university is um, excited about technological changes and ch technological innovations, probably more so than most. Again, by the degree of support they, get, they offered us. Um, What's the next step for you? Well, we are going to, Barbie and I are going to um, present this information at a, at a National Design Teachers Conference in, in March. So we're, we'll be on a couple of panels. We'll be showing, we'll be talking to other foundations teachers throughout the U.S. And uh, we'll probably do it again, probably teach these things again. And ultimately what we'd like to do, a, a long-term goal, is to put this together in, on a CD-ROM and, and uh, have it as a design course, very much like a design book. So we will be the authors of a, of a CD-ROM textbook.